In the upper mid-range market smartphones, we got two new camera focus entries. The Vivo V30 Pro 5G and the Oppo Reno 11 Pro 5G. These phones appear to be close rivals, starting at 32,000 pesos and both of them powered by the same MediaTek Dimensity 8200 chipset. But beyond these similarities though, which one stands out over the other? Hey guys, it's here from Yugatech and today we're gonna find out in this comparison review. So. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Right off the bat, the V30 Pro and the Reno 11 Pro kind of like going for a similar vibe. Don't you think? Left aligned camera bumps, check. Subdued yet premium colors, check. Bodies with smooth and curved edges, check. Aside from looking sophisticated, expect them to be absolutely comfy in your hands. Both phones also come with unique textured colors like the Petal White V30 Pro, which is the variant we have here. And our Reno 11 Pro is in the rock gray color, but you can snag a pearl white option rocking these distinctive textures. Of course, the main difference is the design of the cameras. Unlike the Reno 11 Pro's oval cameras, the V30 Pro comes in squares. And what's interesting about this design is the larger fill light the Aura Light 3.0 right under the camera lenses. This is quite an improvement from the V29 series because of its significantly larger size, meaning it brings brighter fill light for your night portraits. On top of that, you also get the Zeiss logo here. But we'll talk more about this later on in this video. Design-wise, both the V30 Pro and the Reno 11 Pro suits my taste and are great looking devices. But which one do you like better? Now, in terms of performance, expect both models to perform at par with each other when it comes to processing. Like I said earlier, powering both phones is the same Dimensity 8200 chipset, which feels like near flagship level performance already. For starters, the Dimensity 8200 is a 4 nanometer class chipset from MediaTek, and its most powerful cores can reach over 3 GHz clock speed. But setting technicalities aside, naturally, both the V30 and the Reno 11 Pro will perform well on your day-to-day -day tasks, which includes gaming. Running graphically intensive titles like Genshin Impact won't break a sweat on either of these phones, let alone less demanding games like Asphalt 9 or Mobile Legends. Perhaps it boils down to the core optimizations that their respective OS has put in place. In fact, we found some differences in performance between the two with our benchmark results. On Antutu, the V30 Pro got a higher score at 960k compared to the Reno 11 Pro's 890k. The former also got higher scores in other tests such as 3 d Mark and Geekbench. The latter, however, got higher scores on GPU tests Vulkan and Antutu storage tests. Now, this is a bit weird since both phones also utilize the same RAM and storage technology such as LPDDR5X and UFS 3.1. The two phones also pack the same 12GB plus 512GB configuration. Of course, the slight disparity shouldn't necessarily make the V30 Pro more powerful than the Reno 11 Pro, though one thing's for sure, real-world use will feel likely similar on both models. Moving on to their crowning glory, the cameras. At the back, both phones have a triple camera system. The V30 Pro, however, can definitely throw more punches with all of its cameras having 50 megapixel resolution, and including the front one. The main shooter comes with OIS, and both the telephoto and ultrawide have autofocus as well. Adding some spice to the V30 Pro's cameras is the collaboration with Zeiss. In fact, this is the first Vivo's V-series model co-engineered with Zeiss, which primarily helps you capture even more stunning portraits and images in general. And let's not forget the brighter Aura Light 3.0. Just like previous iterations, you can adjust the light from warmer tones to cooler tones. This gives you more flexibility in capturing portraits, whether it's day or at night. On the other hand, the Reno 11 Pro's camera are fairly enough for a mid-range device. While it gets a 50 megapixel main with OIS, it's only complemented with an 8 megapixel ultrawide and a 32 megapixel telephoto. For selfies, the Vivo V30 Pro also has a 50 megapixel front camera as mentioned earlier, while the Reno 11 Pro is left with a 32 megapixel shooter. Now, undeniably, the V30 Pro is expected to capture more details, ultrawides, and especially zoom shots. But that doesn't take away the fact that the Reno 11 Pro can still capture some really great images. In wallet environments, both phones capture sharp, vibrant photos with near accurate colors. The V30 Pro produces warmer tones, and with its Zeiss tuning along with Aura Light, portraits are sure to be nicely done. Dynamic range is also great on both devices, but the Reno 11 Pro sometimes struggles a bit in this case, such as when you're shooting landscape scenery resulting in grainy photos. 
Considering the camera features they offer, the V30 Pro just stands out in this area with all 50 megapixel camera, Zeiss tuning, and of course, the handy fill light courtesy of Auralite 8.0. So moving on, the V30 Pro boasts a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which the company claims is the slimmest phone with that capacity at a mere 7.45 millimeters. Certainly, it's commendable a feat by Vivo. In comparison, the Reno 11 Pro is a bit thicker, measuring at 7.59 millimeter, and houses a smaller 4,600 milliamp hour unit. Now, the difference in battery size might seem minor on paper, but our video loop test shows a notable gap. Here, the Reno 11 Pro lasted a solid 16 hours and 40 minutes, while the V30 Pro pumped out a whopping 21 hours and 40 minutes. This is with a 1080p video playing on loop at 50% brightness, airplane mode enabled, and sound muted for both phones. Need to recharge? Both phones come equipped with blazing fast 80 watt charging, so you shouldn't be tethered to an outlet for too long. Also, dodging the recent trend of ditching the power adapter, <coughs> Both phones come packaged with their own 80 watt. So what that means is you won't need to scramble for a separate adapter or shell out extra cash to take advantage of their fast charging features. As their names imply, both phones come with 5G. No micro SD slots on either, but since both have 512 gigabytes of storage, this won't be much of a problem. Other similar features include Bluetooth 5.3, NFC, and an under-display fingerprint sensor. Both the Vivo V30 Pro and the Reno 11 Pro run on Android 14, skinned with FunTouch OS 14 and Color OS 14, respectively. So, the similarities end here. But wait, both phones still have something up their sleeve. The V30 gets an added layer of protection against splashes and dust, thanks to its IP54 rating. Meanwhile, the Reno 11 Pro boasts a nifty IR blaster. This lets you conveniently use the phone as a universal remote for supported device and appliances like your smart TV. Wrapping this up, the Vivo V30 Pro 5G is the clear winner in this head-to-head -head comparison. It boasts a superior display, a more versatile camera system with Zeiss, and an improved fill light for all your photography needs. Priced at 34,999 pesos, you really can't go wrong with the Vivo V30 Pro 5G. But hey, don't write off the Oppo Reno 11 Pro 5G just yet. It holds its ground in terms of design and processing power. However, it stumbles a bit when it comes to camera performance. On the plus side though, it is a lot cheaper at 31,999 pesos, packing a pretty capable camera system for someone who's a bit more of a casual user. Ultimately, the choice boils down to your priorities. For shutterbugs, the Vivo V30 Pro is the undeniable victor. For those seeking an all-rounded experience at a relatively lower cost, then the Oppo Reno 11 Pro should be one of your contenders. So, which one is the winner for you? Let us know in the comments below. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video or found it informative, do drop a like and subscribe to our channel to watch more. Also, don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok, and visit yougatech.com to stay updated with the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this has been Jose, and I'll catch you guys next time.